The heel block and end block are used to hold the sides together at the neck end and butt end of the guitar. In this video, I will show how to make and install them. I start with a couple of mahogany blocks and cut them a skosh over the final size. On my steel string guitars, for the heel block, I use the final measurements of 1 and 1 quarter inch thick by 2 and 3 quarter inch wide, or 32 millimeters by 70 millimeters. For the end block, I use 3 quarter inch thick by 3 inches wide, or 19 millimeters by 76 millimeters. If you are using the OM plans from LMI, you can verify all of these measurements right from the plans. The heel block is cut to about 3 and 1 half inches tall, or 88 millimeters, and the end block is cut to about 4 and a quarter inches tall, or 108 millimeters. This excess height allows for radius in the top and back of the rims. Make sure the ends of the blocks are square, as this facilitates glue up later. I like to run the edges across my sander so that I remove all saw marks and rough edges. Remember to keep everything square. Now let's work on the thickness of the blocks. I clamp the block in my bench vise and use my block plane to remove material until I arrive at the thickness I want. As you work, check the block with a straight edge to make sure it stays flat. Also check the thickness at both ends. For some reason this causes trouble for some folks, but with a little practice you can make it work. Next let's find the center line of the blocks and mark them on the end of each block. An easy way to find the center line is to place an adjustable square in from one side, but not all the way to the center line of the block, and mark a line. Then do the same thing from the other side and mark a line. Now it is easy to find and mark the actual center line. The heel block is flat on the surface that faces the form. However, the end block is radiused where it meets the form. This radius must be transferred to the end block. Place the end block under the form, making sure its center line is aligned with the center line of the form. Scribe the radius of the form onto the block. Once again, using a block plane, remove material on the edges of the block. You don't have to go all the way to the line you scribed. You can just use it as a reference while radiusing. Notice how I don't plane all the way to the end of the block, but go about halfway and then plane in from the other side. This will prevent blowout on the ends of the blocks. Check the block against the form to make sure you have the correct radius. Next I put a bevel on the edges of both the heel block and end block on the sides that face inside the guitar. To me this looks better than leaving them square. Remember the end block has a radius on one side. Be sure to bevel the other side, not the radius side. I use a block plane to do this. I plane in from both ends so that I don't get blowout on the ends of the blocks. Don't make this bevel too large, or you could have clamping issues when it's time to glue the blocks to the sides. If you are using a bolt-on neck, then you also need enough flat area for the bolts on the heel block. Now spend some quality time with several different grits of sandpaper and make the blocks look pretty. The blocks are now ready to be attached to the sides. Place the sides in the form and make sure they fit snugly against the sides of the form with no gaps. If there are gaps, use clamps or spreaders to remove them. Now mark the center line of the form on the sides. You can mark both sides at once or you can mark one, remove it, and then place the other side in the form and mark it the same way. Now remove the sides from the form. The lines you marked are now transferred over to the inside of the sides. Use a square to do this but remember that on the upper bout of the sides on the back you have a radius if you pre-radiused your sides before bending. 
I only radius the back sides before bending so that I can use the top sides to square off of. With the center lines now on the inside of the guitar sides, I cut off the excess using a bandsaw. You could also use a handsaw. You don't have to be real precise as the end wedge and neck heel will cover any gaps. With the sides placed back in the form in the correct position, apply a small amount of glue to the end block or heel block. Place it in position and place clamping calls on the outside and inside. Quickly apply pressure with a couple of clamps to secure the block to the sides, making sure the block doesn't skate off the center line. Also make sure that the block is square to your work surface. Working quickly, rotate the form so that you can work on the other block. Apply glue and also place it in the correct position. Use clamping calls and clamps to secure in place. Now quickly remove the spreaders and then the sides from the form. Turn the sides over and clamp the other end of each block to the sides. You could also leave the sides in the form while gluing the blocks to them. However, if there is any gap between the blocks, sides, and the form, you will not get good clamping pressure and perhaps a bad glue joint. By first clamping the top sides of the blocks while in the form, I ensure that everything is in the correct position and then remove the sides and continue clamping. Concentrate your clamping pressure towards the outer edges of the blocks as the center is removed for the end wedge and neck joint. You can place more clamps in the center of the blocks as well if you like. I like to make my guitars as clean on the inside as the outside. Therefore, I now clean up any glue squeeze out on the edges of the blocks. After appropriate glue time, remove the clamps and place the sides back in the form. I leave the top edges of the sides flat so that I can place them face down on a flat surface when positioning the sides back in the form. This way I know they are not twisted and are correctly positioned in the form. Insert your spreaders and you are now ready to move to the next step, which in my building sequence is to radius the sides in a radius dish. Watch my video entitled Closing the Box to see how this is done.